previously on Super Idols RPG. Just to establish for no weird reason at all, but you all do go to this school, right? <laughs> <laughs> It was just, uh, you know, my mom's gonna be away and I have to take care of a bunch of chores and the weekend, so... Oh, right, right, right. You always have like a million and one things to do. How about we meet at 7.30 a.m. before school starts so that... Oh, um, I should remind everybody, by the way, it is Friday right now. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe we can get started on some dance practices sometime this weekend. So I have like a little keyboard and I will try to think up different tunes and melodies and stuff that we could I could present to the team. You write a really great first draft and with that we're going to say that the evening ends with everybody feeling excited for the practice on Saturday. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I am your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey, yeah. Maria. Howdy. And Luca. Salve. <laughs> so we are here for the start of a new in-game day. It's your first weekend day of the game. Um, but before we launch straight into that, there's a couple of housekeeping things I want to take care of before we start. Um, so the first one I want to mention is that Valerie got an advancement recently, um, and I don't think we went over what that was on the recording. So why don't you let us know what advancement you chose? So that is a move from another playbook. That is the Scion playbook, uh, I believe from the Phoenix Academy expansion. Mm -hmm. And the move is called Changed Sides. When you mislead or trick an enemy by pretending to be on their side, roll plus danger. On a hit, they buy your charade for now. On a 7 to 9, choose 1. On a 10 plus, choose 2. And those are choosing from, uh, you avoid having to provide concrete evidence, you create an opportunity, or you expose a weakness or flaw. On a miss, someone else watching comes to the worst possible conclusion and acts on it. Nice. This could be very good when engaging with rival factions or labels and whatnot. Yep. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to do is something I actually meant to do in the last episode, but forgot. <laughs> um, so for for Alan slash Queen Bee, uh, you are the Janus, and the Janus has a special move about handling their obligations. Yes. And that move is when time passes, Roll plus your mundane to see how you're managing your obligations. On a hit, things are going pretty well. You have an opportunity or advantage thanks to one of your obligations. On a 7 to 9, you've lapsed in one obligation, your choice. And on a miss, you haven't given your normal life anywhere near the attention it deserves. The GM chooses two obligations that are going to bite you in the butt. So what I'm going to have you do is roll your plus mundane and see how you're keeping up with things. Perfect. Okay, I've got an 8. Nice! Uh, so you've really only fallen behind on one obligation. Everything else is kind of going okay for right now. Yeah, you get to pick which obligation you've kind of fallen a bit behind on. Okay, let's see. I have uh, a job as a delivery person. I have my household chores and I have the environmental club at school. Probably my household chores are uh, falling behind. I see. Um, so you might run into a little bit of trouble this morning, actually, because you know you have the meeting coming up in the afternoon, but you've forgotten that your your parents asked you to go on a, a small grocery run this afternoon. Um, if you don't hustle, that might cut into practice time. Oh, well, yeah, that's a problem. And uh, I mean... What do you do about that when you're confronted with this in, say, like your <laughs> your kitchen, I guess, in the morning? I could either say I'm going to do it and then not do it, or I can try and say that I can't spare the time with the practice and the schoolwork, and the, I think I'm going to say, like, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry, Mom, I just, I, I can't manage. I'm sorry, I, I can do need, it. We need, we need milk and, and eggs and whatnot. What do you think we're going to do for dinner? I mean, like, can... I have, I have to go out this afternoon, too. I don't have time to do that. Okay, but there's, like, 
delivery service. I mean, I, I, I know you, I, I, I can pay for it. I, I got, I oh, can put some money there. I just can't. It's, it's, like, it's no, fine. No, no, I it's, should. It's be, fine. We'll, we'll deal with it. Somehow. I should be doing this, but I, I can't do it right now. I'm sorry. I it's, just don't have the time. I, I can't. Like, if I don't get to school in time, it's gonna be a problem. It's fine. It, you're, uh, I should probably clarify, is this your, your, do you have both mom and dad? What's your parental situation? I think I have uh, both mom and dad, but, uh, like, uh, my dad works full time. Oh, okay. So your dad might even just, like, not even be here He's, right now. He's out working Yeah, he might right be now. doing... Okay, so your your mom is giving you, like, the exasperated look right now. Like, yes. I, I can't deal with this right now, but fine. <laughs> I also don't have time to scold you fully right now. Uh, like, I'm trying to make her think it's a schoolwork thing and not an, I- not an idle thing, because, I mean, mm-hmm. she knows, but... Yeah, like, she knows that, like, if it's a school thing, she can't, like, force you to drop that, because that's that would be bad for you. But she's also, like, not happy that you didn't, like, plan things out better. So you may you may end up leaving the house in a bit of a mood today. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, that sucks. Is, with that out of the way, is there anything anybody else wants to do before they head out to the meeting for the afternoon? Um, uh, go ahead. I think all I'd really do is maybe like get all of the paper of the like little bit of music I wrote together uh, frantically as I rush out, very anime style. <laughs> Probably got like a, a piece of toast in my Running mouth. Running out with the sheet music in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got toast in my hand and sheet music in my mouth. I, just, I got you it mixed up for some reason. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great mental picture. Please someone draw fan art of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Angie would have been maybe up a bit later looking up um, something tube videos. What's the video... Uh, probably looking up dance videos, but I guess what's the streaming service that we're using in this fictional yeah, world? I think you mentioned I, it yet. Last yeah, I think time. I think YouTube exists, but I think there is also a dedicated Idle Tube that spun off of Idle Tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Idle Gram yeah. or something was it called? Oh yeah, there's Idle Gram too. There's definitely Idle Gram. <laughs> yeah, so oh, I looked up. I just looked up the Yeah, I'd say I was looking up choreography videos on Idle Tube. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very fair. Yeah, so it's up a bit late, but uh, I'm doing the same thing where I'm rushing through and kind of, you know, eating a toast while getting my shoes on and that kind of thing. (laughs) Okay, so you're getting everything together. Of course, Freddy is trying to, like, mess with you as usual. Um, He's managed to load his, like, Nerf gun with chewed gum and is trying to, like, shoot it at your head or something. (sighs) Ah. Uh, so- I am going to storm up to him and I'm going to try and take the Nerf gun away from him. So I've had enough of this. <laughs> I'm going to have you directly engage a threat. He's trying to shoot you with a gum gun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. You got a oh, six. Oh, no. And you also don't have anyone around to help right now. No. <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, he's a, he's a little too small and quick for you. He dashes kind of around you um, and manages to get off a good hit, um, and he gets some good, nice, sticky gum in your hair. <sighs> <laughs> he looks so silly. <laughs> I'm going to start chasing after him. I've completely <laughs> stopped worrying he's just about like, being late. laughing like a goblin running around the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm also, of course, going to be going, Mom! (laughs) Angie and Freddy, for the love of goddamn Christ, stop that right now and let me take my Xanax! He just got gum in my hair! Well, get some scissors and deal with it. I don't have time to deal with you two right now. Um, and she's got, like, a cold compress on her forehead. So where is this gum in my hair? Um, it's probably, like, it. thankfully it might be in, like, an easy-ish place to get out, like, in the, like maybe like the bottom of your ponytail but it's still like kind of tangly yeah okay so yeah i'm gonna stomp upstairs um (laughs) so that i can cut it out probably (laughs) hasn't been the first occurrence of this happening but i'm also plotting revenge all right um and i'm also going to have you mark angry because you're definitely angry at this point (laughs) Uh, okay (laughs) and you're also going to be late oh no okay 
Uh, anybody else want to try anything before they go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if uh, no one else wants to go first, I have something in mind. Oh, definitely. Go for it. Anne regularly kind of like gets up early around like half six, seven a.m. And uh, yeah, so uh, she gets up early to go jogging. You like dresses like in a kind of sweatshirt and just like just regular exercise clothes. She has like her change of clothes still in her uh, in her like bag that she carries on her back, which is also filled with rocks because it kind of disorients her how easy it is to, like run for long times and how like easy it is to just move like you know be able like pretty much pick up a car and you're not not pick up a car but kind of like hold one up like. Kind of it disorients her because it is disorienting to go from one thing to another. So she often like when she runs, she kind of like tries to wear. It's like when a jogger wears like weights around her legs, kind yeah, of yeah. To help like make it feel more natural. I guess if you've got that strength, to use it for sure. Yeah, it was a really weird day when she just went to the beach and started filling her bag up with rocks. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's what she's doing. She's just jogging and will like kind of once it gets the time to arrive at the idle training, the practice session, she will be there. Cool, cool. And the the meeting is not until like two in the afternoon, so you've got plenty of time to like do whatever it, um, and practice and exercise. You might even be able to like, since it's the weekend, you might even be able to like get to the school grounds early and run around the track if you want for a while. Oh, that sounds very cool. Yeah. Uh, so you're probably gonna be the first one there. I'm gonna say. Uh, anybody? I know, and probably then Jaden will <laughs> will get there the earliest yeah. as well. <laughs> He's very efficiently got everything. Either in hand or in mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Alan might be a bit late. Angie is going to be quite late, unfortunately. <laughs> and well, how about Valerie? How's Valerie's morning going? Morning and early afternoon. I think Valerie's morning, it probably mostly involves uh, lying in bed watching anime. As you do. As, as one does. And I guess I still need to talk to Grace, my assistant at Rain Shadow Records, and eventually talk to Mary Rain about uh, basically pulling favors to get us to look at the stage mm-hmm. in advance. So I'm not sure if that should be before or after the meeting. Uh, that can be anytime you want. It, it will work either now or after, whichever you prefer. All right, then uh, I'll probably call Grace to try to set this up before the meeting and then figure out when I'll have to talk to Mary in the future. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, you give Grace a call and they pick up fairly quickly. Like, hello, this is Grace. How- oh, uh, Valerie, how's it going? Oh, it's it's going fine. Uh, at the uh, the club, we, we were told about the gig that was that was set up at the Stormlights. Ah, uh, yes. Um, uh, I do know about that. I, I'm sorry I didn't get to call you about it sooner. It did come up fairly suddenly, as things with Mary often do. Um, but yes, that is that is set. You are all booked for a couple weeks from now on the 19th. And let me know if you need help with any of the logistics of that. Uh, what do you need? What do you, what do you need set up? Well... We want to be able to, uh, you know, f- figure out choreography on the the stage itself. Is there? I mean, I know it's it's always busy. Can we get a look at the stage sometime in advance, far enough that we can, huh? you know, figure well, out the size and and start planning? Um, yeah, that certainly would be good. Um, and I wish I could say that I could do that for you. Um, what I can do is, if you do manage to set that up, I can probably talk with the venue and work out the like nitty gritty and stuff like setting up equipment and scheduling and stuff um but i don't i'm basically a glorified gopher i don't really have the authority to make those kinds of bookings myself i think you actually might have to talk to mary to get that set up okay she she would have the authority to actually talk to the club and book that kind of thing yeah, I I was afraid you'd say that. Well, yeah, I, I'm sorry to be the the bearer of bad news. All right. Well, I guess can you uh, schedule that or let her know? And I'm I'm sure she'll demand whatever time she wants. Sure. Well, I'll let her know to expect your call. I can put something temporary on the calendar. Maybe some like uh, some suggested dates and times. We'll we'll see how it goes with her. That fingers crossed we know how um unpredictable she can be let's say all right thank you i mean it's it's a good sign that she set this gig up for you in the first place i guess so 
here's hoping? Yeah. Yeah, here's hoping that she'll just let me do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I will I will get on that as quickly as possible. Um, and you let me know when you've been able to speak to Mary or, well, I guess she'll let me know probably before you can get to me. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks. I'll I'll get I'll get back to you later then. You have a good day. You too, Grace. Thanks. You got this. And you can't <laughs> see it, but you know that um that they're giving you a thumbs up. Yeah. I kind of reflexively give them a thumbs up as well. <laughs> even though they can't see me either. Yeah. All right. So that's taken care of. I don't think that cuts into your your time getting to the meeting like you know how to monitor your time fairly well while you're watching anime. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. Fair- this is a fantasy scenario uh playing someone that's not myself who knows how to manage her time while watching anime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I I don't have an appropriate watching anime move for you to roll for, so be be glad you don't have to roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you head off to the the meeting, um, and I guess to start, it'll be Anne and Jaden and Valerie all kind of arrive sort of in a similar time frame, and you probably will have to meet out front of the school because none of you have a key to get into the school on the weekend. So I think Jaden runs up, out of breath, paper still in hand, probably toasted in hand as well, because <laughs> he didn't figure out that he has to switch those around for it to work. <laughs> and he just... Out of breath. <sighs> okay, I'm not late. <sighs> and where are the where are the other two of you at right now? Uh, I've already positioned myself to be uh, leaning casually against the wall. The perfect lean. I obviously had to hurry here to arrive slightly early to give the appearance that I don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> and strides up, and uh, as soon as she rises, she just drops her bag, which you know has far too heavy a clunk, like when it hits the ground, which is, again, the aforementioned stones there. <laughs> and she just uh, opens it up and pulls out, which is kind of like rolled up, is her leather jacket, which Anne is not smart. She doesn't realize that rolling leather is a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just uh, it, like it's like a duster leg, like comes down to her legs and just uh, takes off her sweatshirt and just throws on the leather jacket instead. Cool, cool. Hey, Anne. How are you? <sighs> Tired. I... I ran the whole way. Oh. Um, and it's like searching her brain for what to say and just goes, You should walk next time. And in her mind she's like, Nailed it! <laughs> 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 we were discussing the inspirations for our characters before the show and I'm beginning to realise Anne is just early redemption arc Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Perfect. Uh, yeah, Va- Valerie will also walk over and say, uh, I mean, we can, seems like not everyone's here so you can catch your breath, but I think maybe better to, uh, not show up out of breath for practice. Good, good point. Good point. But, um, I was also because I was, I was really excited because I've got a surprise for everyone. I need everyone else to be here first, but I've got a surprise. And then while he, while he's, I'm um, saying that he's hiding the piece of paper behind his back, he <laughs> just realized that. He hasn't hit it, so he's not really much of a surprise yet. So he's just holding it behind his back. <laughs> uh, Valerie's eyes dart to where he's obviously holding something behind his back, but doesn't say anything. Yeah, I think you guys are going to love it. Hopefully. I think it was good. It's good. Um, okay, I'm just going to stop talking about it, because I feel like if I keep talking, I'm going to end up giving it away. So. Oh, okay. And he just, he just covers his mouth with one of his, <laughs> his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> I just want to protect him. Yeah. <laughs> me, me, the player, not Valerie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Valerie uh, doesn't care, of course. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't care about anything. Of course. <laughs> okay, so you all stand there and, and chat for a bit, uh, and it, it takes a little bit, but fi- uh, eventually you see, uh, well, I, Alan, you probably would have transformed on your way, I assume, oh, yes. right? Uh, absolutely, I'm just... Uh... Strutting up, fully transformed, and say, "Oh, you're here already." Um, so before you do that, we're gonna go through like the quick version of the the transformation move. You don't have to go through the whole like transformation sequence. Although we didn't go through your transformation sequence last time, so if you want to tell us what that sequence looks like, you can. I uh, think think I might pick it for uh, another moment. I have a few ideas, but oh, if nobody fine. gets to see it, it's not as fun to do it. Okay. But yeah, so you, so you can shift any anything up one and down one. 
Okay, I think I'm shifting down mundane and shifting up danger. Okay. Mundane one, danger zero. Okay. Perfect. So is everybody ready to get down to business? Wait, no, you didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you need to say. <laughs> huh. Let's get down to business. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> obviously let's get down to business. Oh no! <laughs> no, oh, no. I know I've set the recording. I'd leave the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Continue. So, everybody ready for some practice? Yes. Good. Because if we want this uh, this gig to work, we need to build up some buzz. <laughs> that is a, that's a noise that can makes. <laughs> Valerie turns her eyes away and covers her mouth so that people don't see her smirking. <laughs> Jaden very openly just laughs. He loves it. That was great. Our character, Drac, Drac is like, oh no, a pun. But Jaden, he's all about them. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Karen comes out from behind Queen Bee with finger guns and just says, got him. <laughs> Oh, hey, Karen. Hello. She waves a yellow light stick at a queen bee. And just smile a lot. <laughs> and I think at this point, finally, um, Angie can come rolling in. <laughs> uh, I am definitely running. Are you in, like, your, your good Chanel sports again? <laughs> no, no. Actually, she's just wearing, like, like just some sports shorts and runners and like a tank top with like a sweatshirt over it, but the sweatshirt's like a zip up and it's open. It looks very sporty. If it's name brand, you probably wouldn't know, but uh, it, it kind of looks like she rushed to put everything on to get, <laughs> to get over here. <laughs> and your your hair is and mysteriously her... about half an inch shorter than it was the, yes. the last time you saw her. Yeah. And if slightly jagged notices, at the ends. Yeah. If anyone <laughs> notices that's that's also happened, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, she's panting. <laughs> I think I would like to pierce the mask. Ooh, on on Angie? Ooh. Yes. Okay. Uh, I I want to find out why my definite rival for leadership of this group is showing up uh, late and possibly bedraggled. <laughs> Alrighty then, go for it. Uh, also, you get a plus one because you have influence over Angie. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting about influence that's, when you all do moves against each other. That's true. Uh, that's good since my mundane is minus one. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So that is a ten. Oh. On, on a ten plus, you get to ask three questions um, off of what are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? Or how could I gain influence over you? Hmm. I guess these, hmm, maybe assess the situation would have been better. Well, that's not really, I just, none of these are really, uh, what happened here or, <laughs> or what, why are you, why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you really planning or what do you intend to do might be the closest. Uh. Or maybe how could I get your character to explain what happened? That's a good one. Yeah. That's good. I'm going to go with what do you intend to do and Valerie looks Angie up and down and, and says, are you okay? Did something happen? Oh, just a little brother I have to murder. But I'm fine, otherwise. She, like, stands and starts straightening her clothes a little bit, like, sh she's trying to show that she totally planned this, but it's very obvious that she mm -hmm. didn't. And that she's seething. <laughs> and she's mad, so she wouldn't normally, um, she doesn't normally talk about her home life at all or her parents. I'm sure there's enough rumors around school about what happened, because, you know, that's just how school works. But uh, it's probably the first time she's ever mentioned her family, but she's so mad at Freddy that she's looking for accomplices. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really need the other questions. I just wanted to see if I could, you know, confirm or suss out what was going on. Okay. Alrighty then, we'll and leave it at that. Annoying then. little brother is enough of an explanation, <laughs> probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, y'all are together. Y'all are up the at the front of the school. Um, 
not sure exactly what you're going to do, since nobody has a key to get into this school. Uh... When we approach the lock, um, Anne just begins slowly raising fist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe we don't do that. Uh. It'd be quick. Did we forget to tell Mrs. Doyle that we were planning on practicing? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, you did. And yes. also, I, I think as I recall from last session, your intent was you wanted to book, like, the auditorium or something, but you won't be, you won't be able to until, like, Tuesday when school is back in. By the way, there's no school on Monday because it is Labor Day in universe. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I just realized that. <laughs> uh, um, so what you're doing here on Saturday is you still want to practice, but you don't necessarily have access to your regular room to do it in. So you're okay. try- you're going to have to figure something out. Either get into the school somehow or find an alternate place to practice. Okay, so um, first thing we should do is to check and see if people know how to do their jobs around here and actually locked the doors. <laughs> Never know. So That's maybe we can just uh, <clears throat> split up and check all the doors and then meet back um, back at the front. Aaron, where's the front of the school on this map? Um, it's the bottom the bottom end of the map, the where the office is. That's kind of where the entrance is to the right of the office, oh, those doors okay. there. Yeah, okay. Just wanted yeah. to make sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see your little circle there. Yeah, it's right, right around there. That's where you are right now. Yeah, perfect. Um, let's try that first. Okay. Alrighty. That sounds like a good idea. So everybody splitting up? Is everybody going uh, individually? Anybody going in like pairs, trios? Hmm. I mean, I guess we would kind of technically go in pairs because we can only go around to the left or to the right. Yeah. Or does it matter? We just split up in two groups essentially because we're just yeah. splitting yeah. up and going two opposite directions, right? <laughs> and there is yeah. five of us, so. Oh, six of you, including Karen. Oh, yeah, six of us. In- yeah, so an even split. So. I'm just going to start walking and just expect some people to follow me. <laughs> Va- <laughs> Valerie, like an angry power rock. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Valerie immediately turns and starts walking the opposite direction. <laughs> she was your alignment. Yeah. <laughs> and she's 100% lawful evil. This is what civil war should have been. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, everybody else... Angie is walking in one direction, let's say to the right. Valerie is walking in the other direction, to the left. <laughs> Who's going with whom? Ooh. Oh boy. Um, Jaden's too indecisive, so he's going to wait for everyone else to choose. And then, <laughs> go for, <laughs> so, and then go on the side where there's the least amount of people. <laughs> so you're just staring at everyone else like, where are you guys going? Karen shrugs and, ju- and just kind of leans against the wall. Okay, Queen's going to make a bid for it. Jaden, you're with me. And uh, I just uh, start uh, climbing up the wall to get to the roof access. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can do that, yes. Um, actually, that's probably a good time to roll Unleash Your Powers, because you can do that fine yourself, but, but while carrying Jaden, yes. I think you need to roll for it. Perfect. Ooh. Very nice. Nice. So you are able to, like, Michael Jackson moonwalk your way up the side of the school with Jaden in your arms, and you look fabulous doing it. Jaden's like, what? Oh, oh, okay, I guess it's happening now, okay. Okay. Yes, it is. I feel like Angie looks at this happening, and she just nods approvingly. <laughs> <laughs> so that leaves uh, Anne and Karen in the front of the school. <laughs> Anne, what are you going to do? I'm real tempted to break the lock, but I don't know how consequences. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can uh, if you want. Anne is going to follow uh, Valerie. All right. I guess Karen will follow along with Angie because she doesn't want Angie to feel lonely. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Karen. Do you have a little brother? Mm. Just uh, as a theatric question to ask as they're walking as they're walking away. She tilts her head. You could say that. Perfect. I need some ideas. Oh, what can I help you with? She seems very cordial all of a sudden. When he does little pranks on you, how do you get revenge? <laughs> hmm? We don't really have that kind of an adversarial relationship. We just kind of get along, talk it out, you know, civil like. <sighs> Why am I not surprised? Ugh. But Valerie has some ideas. 
Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> All right. So y'all head around <laughs> the the right hand side of the school. You're heading towards kind of the the track area. Um, actually, I'm going to say that you see uh, you see someone you recognize uh, running around the track. It is Emily, the girl who was there on the the first day of the Idol Club with you, who was scared and left at the end of it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, she's she's a uh, she's also on the track team, so she's just running. <laughs> she's just running track on the weekend. Okay. Um, I'm probably just gonna kind of wave her down, because I know from experience with all my sporty prep friends that you don't just try to distract them and interrupt them like mid sprint run or whatever, because they might hurt themselves. So <laughs> she would probably wave. Oh yeah, and Emily uh, eventually spots you. Um, and her face lights up because she's like happy to see someone she recognizes too. But then she looks like a little guilty because she knows she like just abandoned you a, a few days back. <laughs> um, so she looks unsure about whether she wants to like approach or not. But she does like kind of jog in the spot and give you like a wave. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna shout, uh, Emily. Do you have a key to the school? Oh, uh, so no. I, I I'm just here to to run today. Um, I think. There, there might be like an access way some way, but I, I'm not sure where it is. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and then I just wave and keep going. I don't really care that she left. It is. Aww. If and you're no use to me, you. <laughs> she is kind of like, kind of like nervously watching you as she she runs, but she doesn't say anything else. Yeah, I definitely just after after I've asked the question, I got my answer. I just keep going. Okay, um, <laughs> so. With that, I'm going to cut back around to the other side of the school, where uh, Valerie and Anne are. So you are kind of around the the longer uh, west end side of the school that um, extends further out. So there isn't quite as much to find in the way of, like, <laughs> interesting scenery, but there are a few more, like, doors along the side of the building. Uh, yeah, Valerie feels a little uncomfortable because she was kind of, uh, felt like she put her foot in her mouth when talking to Anne the first time, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling embarrassed and uh, just walking right where I know the next door is to try to jimmy the, uh, or, or to, to jiggle the handle, see if it's locked. So you, you do that, and unfortunately it does seem like the school, the school may not have money, but they are, like, competently run, so the door is locked. Anne is currently looking upwards, and is like, and then looks down at um, Valerie and goes, you know, I could probably launch you up there because it seemed to be working well for Jaden and B. so I'm just saying it's an option. This is Anne attempting to form a bond. <laughs> um, I would, uh, I should probably transform before we try anything like that just in case. I'm not sure I should really do it out here though, it's, um, I mean, I, I, every, everyone wants to keep, I mean, I guess not, not everyone keeps, can, can keep it a secret, but, um, I mean, I have, in, in my case, I have, um, it, you know, um, you know, that, that's, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, and, and, you don't have to be nervous. I'm, I'm not, I'm not smart, but I understand you're, like, look, we're cool if, if that's what you're worried about. Like, believe me, what you did is pretty light on the radar compared to what I've dealt with before, so we're cool. Okay. Um, well, sorry for being weird. I'll try to relax. Um, I just... I also will I, say, sorry, sorry to interrupt, um, mm -hmm. if you do want a place where you can transform in a place that maybe you won't be seen, there is, like, a little alcove, kind of like where, like, room 346 and 3201 on the map are, there's that mm -hmm. little, like, sort of corner where you might I, not be as seen. I do want to say, like, Anne's suggestion was just kind of me making a joke that like, you don't have to, like, go along with that, like, you know, I just, mm -hmm. you want to do it, it's cool, but I just want to say, like, it wasn't me, like, seriously suggesting that, it was just, like, Anne just being kind of an awkward person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah, Val Valerie's still going to go find that, that alcove to sort of transform in, um, just, if for no other reason, then she feels more confident and less awkward that way. Alright, that makes sense. Uh, so you're gonna do your transformation sequence move. Uh, 
think we've we've gone through the how it looks a couple times at this point, so we don't have mm-hmm. to go through all that again. Um, but you gain access to your powers, and you get to shift your labels. Which uh, labels would you like to shift? Uh, I would like to shift my mundane up and my danger down. Okay. So I any reason why that. mundane up? I'm curious. Uh, in this case, I'm I'm actually transforming just because I'm uh, desperately trying to feel, uh, ironically, feel more confident and capable of per- mm. being in a social situation right now. That makes sense. All right. Awesome. Uh, so you finish your transformation, uh, the last of your, your ribbons tie into place, and you are ready if, uh, if you are willing to go along with Anne's plan. The plan of Anne. No, I'll, I'll, I'll step back out and say, um, actually, I have another idea. I haven't really done this very much with my powers, but I can just move things. So, uh, let's, let's see. And I'm going to try to use my telekinesis to push the door open from the other side. Oh, all right oh, then. Oh. Well, this definitely counts as an obstacle, so I'm going to have you mm-hmm. uh, roll Freak to unleash your powers. All right. That's another uh, regular hit. So you've got a nine, um, and you have two team points. And would you like to help and make that a ten? Uh, are you okay with that, um, Yeah. Diana? Cool. Yeah, I'm down for helping. I'm, I can of imagine if... Uh, is it a push or a pull door? <laughs> um, it would be a push from the inside door to open. Yeah, I imagine, like, as, like, it's kind of opening, like, Anne will kind of, like, try and, like, hold, like, not pull, like, the door out with hinges, but just pull it forward a bit to help with the opening, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, Valerie's got it by, like, her telekinesis just about, like, almost got the lock, but it's, like, mm-hmm. just just a little bit jammed and just needs that oh. little bit extra oomph, which Anne can I provide. Have... I think I have an idea. Oh yeah, of yeah. How Go for help switches that it's like a, a push b- push bar to open, right? Mm-hmm. And so the bar glows purple, and as Vivi's violence violet uh, holds up her hand to try to you know control it, and the bar pushes in, but she can't like she's 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 trying to push the, swing the whole door open and can't quite get enough force on the telekinesis to actually get move the whole door and then Anne walks over and just pulls it open since the awesome. bar nice. has been pushed like already. That. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so you have successfully opened a door. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You've solved my door puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> We've broken into the school. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you don't have to worry about alarms in the school, um, just because I don't want to deal with that. So if there's no alarm, you just get into the school. Um, <laughs> all right. And before we move on with uh, with the two of you, uh, we're going to go back up to the roof with uh, Queen Bee and Jaden. <laughs> so Queen Bee, you have successfully uh, moonwalked your way up to the roof uh, with Jaden in tow, um, literally swept Jaden off his feet. And <laughs> now you're now you're on the roof. <laughs> There's not much up here. There is uh, just like the the structure that houses the door that leads into the building, and of course, like a like a fence kind of around the edges of the roof. Perfect. I try the door. See if it's open. Actually, it is. This is the one door that's <laughs> unlocked. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank God for smoke breaks. <laughs> that's exactly why it's unlocked. Oh, good thinking, B. Um... But could like could you like give me more of a heads up next time you like pick me up and walk up the side of a building because that was uh, terrifying. I'm sorry, honey. I just <sighs> could have used a, a lockpick. <laughs> okay. And with your powers, you were the best one available. I promise <laughs> I'll never carry you in my arms without asking you before. Thank you. Thank you. And now. Oh, this is not good for my heart. <laughs> well then. I'll go first then. Also, I want to acknowledge your your use of honey. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right. I follow. Yes. So follow you you him. descend the stairs down from the roof uh, into the into the main sort of atrium area of the school. You're kind of around uh, the main office, so like 100, 101, that kind of area. Uh, so you are free to make your way through the building and. I guess that just leaves um, Angie and Karen out behind the school by the track. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have said I would have tried to open that door, and if it didn't work, I would just keep moving on. 
Yeah, no, the the doors in the back aren't really working out. Um, thankfully, um, I I might <laughs> I just give this one to you. Um, uh, y'all have the the additional magical power of cell phones. Um, so once <laughs> once the rest <laughs> of you are inside that. the school, you <laughs> might want to text the others, <laughs> and let them yeah. know that you can get in, that they'll let you in. Yeah, I I text it. Yeah, the roof entrance is open, so you can, oh, okay. uh, you can climb up the roof. Yeah, I'll just text back and say that we're waiting by the backtrack entrance. Yeah, you're kind of near the the door, like either by the like the gym or like the change room A, that door leading out. Yeah, um, I assume we have like a group chat. <laughs> yeah, you have a you have yeah. a group chat at this point on Idle Cord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. No, it's it. We just run with it. You got to run with it at this point. <laughs> Oh god, I do god. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um no, so it's, I, sorry, sorry. It's called uh Disc Idol and the icon is a CD. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love oh, that. Yes. Yeah, it's Disc Idol. Yeah. Or is that so. the competing service? <laughs> <laughs> I, either or. Yeah, I like Disc Idol. <laughs> All right. So you have a group chat on Disc Idol. <laughs> what is what is your server name called? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, um, Angie probably set it up, so it's definitely just the Fork McNally Idol Club server. The Fork server. McNally? Because <laughs> they don't have fix a team the spelling mi- yet or anything. <laughs> yeah. Did fix the spelling mistake at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so y- you're chatting on the, the Fork McNally Idol Club um, disc <laughs> idol server. Um, you yeah. Yeah. Let- <laughs> Uh, Jaden lets you know that they were able to get in through the roof, um, and I assume Jaden and Queen Bee are going to head to the the back of the school and let Angie and Karen in. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, and I think Valerie and uh, Anne, are you going to head straight to the room, or are you going to meet up with them at the back? Uh, we can all meet up at the same time. All right, just for the sake of expediency, everybody meets up and heads to the room together. Uh, and congratulations, you're in your practice room. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, um, I forgot my clipboard because I was a little distracted today. So I'm just going to put a note in our disc idol chat. I was going to say discord by accident. <laughs> <laughs> to remember to schedule Saturdays at 2 p.m. for our practice sessions. <laughs> and this is just for using the conference room. Uh, you still have to work on mm-hmm. getting the auditorium. Yeah. Okay. So you're all there and yeah, go go at it. Do what thou wilt. Okay. Um first, uh who is going to be playing instruments and who is going to be singing and dancing or is everybody doing everything? I mean, I can play instruments and probably better it than I am at singing, but I could if we need more singers and dancers, I don't mind doing that as well. I don't dance. Not a chance. Okay. Uh, but so- you, you do rhyme some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like when Anne has a plan. <laughs> oh, he's actually referencing High School Musical, I Don't Dance. Yeah, oh. I knew it. I had a feeling. I, that went yeah. completely over my head. I was like, is Dang, it just me I do that- have to watch that as research for this podcast, don't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. It Here's literally is it. a High School Musical. <laughs> yeah, you can bet on it. I, oh, I will say right now, I'm not going to watch Glee, at least. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that leaves uh, me and Queen B, uh, I guess, to be support for Vivi. And I look over, like, perplexed, because Vivi's in full transformation. I just nod. Yeah, so what I'm thinking, uh, we don't have any measurements for the for the actual venue yet, right? So we're just kind of... Yeah. Yeah, like you yeah. you could look up the you've looked up those measurements online but you don't like it without actually being there. It's just like numbers. It's hard to tell like exactly what they are unless you have like a measuring tape or something out. Yeah, and I forgot all my stuff at home, so all the stuff I wrote down. So I definitely would have done meticulous research on that. Um, but uh yeah, so I'll kind of say, well we'll have our instrument players um maybe we'll form a V towards the front with the point being VV uh, facing the stage. And then me and B, and then Jaden and Anne, and then we'll all be uh, spread out enough so we can all be seen. But uh, how, how did people think of that? 
Jane's just nodding like very enthusiastically. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that sounds great. I can work with that. Hopefully, um, I don't know how much control we'll have over the lighting, but hopefully the lighting will make sure you know we're all lit up and focused on. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, yeah, that was my first plan. So, <laughs> And then also like during this, um, Karen is kind of like moving over to, to Jaden and kind of like peeking around his back where uh, that paper <laughs> is and like yeah uh, he's like just kind of poking at it. vibrating from how excited he is <laughs> and when he sees um when he sees karen peeking uh trying to take a peek uh he just kind of breaks and like okay okay fine yes you can see it i've got and it goes guys guys okay i got really excited yesterday so i tried to put get like write a song and some music actually i haven't got lyrics yet but i tried to make um, write some music that has all of the stars encompassed in it and then he pulls out the sheet music it's not perfect um i think there's still parts that we can work on together but here and he just like holds it out with both hands oh my god that was so fast and i take it and look at it and then hand it to to violet i should probably also ask who all in the group knows how to read sheet music and who doesn't <laughs> oh i well actually oh, would she well I anna's think, punk yeah, so she could or does. could not take it either way i don't think she knows how to read sh- sheet music it's kind of like okay. an inherent thing with her like powers or something when it comes to well, the punk rock again that yeah that just makes her more punk rock <laughs> <laughs> um i don't think angie actually would i think she would know how when hearing the songs how to like choreograph them but i don't think she would actually be skilled in that part i think uh vivi would have learned while taking actual lessons over the summer mm-hmm. and how about queen bee i think uh, just the barest bare minimum of understanding of what uh, of annotation ah, okay so i will say for the the couple of you who do know how to read sheet music what you see is is a very like energetic track like it, you don't know like know exactly how it's gonna sound obviously because you don't know what instruments are gonna go to it but it sounds very upbeat but also like there's a power behind it that reflects um the the sort of gothic rock sensibilities that they want to be present in a show that features valerie so what do you think this this looks really good I'm really interested to see how it sounds i mean it it, it looks Really good from what I can see. Jaden's just like grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> and and Karen actually raises a hand um, and says, I have some software at home. I could make a demo if you need one. Yes. Yes. I wanted to try doing that, but I have no idea how to use any of that stuff. Mm, she nods. Like she has probably like whatever the equivalent of like garage band or something is <laughs> in this world. Looks like we have a producer. Yeah, and she gives you, like, a very professional smile, like, yes, of course you do. I love Karen. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I just I just love how there's some hidden talent we exactly need for the show that she did. It's an anime. This yeah. is how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, she also seemed to know, like, how to set up, like, the speakers and everything for you last time. So she's maybe a little mm-hmm. bit more technically minded than you give her credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that would be great, Karen. Yeah, uh, she takes the, the sheet from you. Yeah, I can I can make up some virtual instruments and make something, just a basic mock-up should be, should be good. I'd love that. I can play some of it now, just so you guys can get um, at least what it sounds like on a piano, because I can play that. Absolutely. Do we have like a piano or keyboard in this room? Uh, yeah, let's say you do, because, uh, again, the school knows that this was meant to be the uh, the idol club's room. There's a few things left over from previous years, including, like, a like a basic keyboard setup and speakers and amps. Maybe even, like, a couple basic, like, n- maybe not, like, a full drum set, but, like, a couple basic, like, drums <laughs> sort of things. Yeah. Ooh, um, drums and piano. And, of course, there's a, an acoustic guitar, because any music room needs an acoustic guitar. <laughs> So yeah, um, I think Jaden would go, he would definitely look back and forth between the drum set and the keyboard, but decides that 
they'll probably get a better feel for the music from a keyboard than just drums. Yeah. And then goes to hand the keyboard, turns it on, and tries to um, play it from what he remembers, because he went over it quite a bit last night, so I think he remembers at least a decent amount of it. Alrighty. And is this something where you're trying to get, like, a specific reaction out of people, or are you just trying to, like, just demonstrate for the sake of, like, this is what the song sounds like? Oh, I think I'd be trying to get a reaction out of people. Okay. So we can again use the uh, the it's time for my solo move, uh, which Ooh. I have rewritten slightly since the last time we used it. So it can be used in just a general context and not just in the context that I had originally meant it for. Uh, so for it's time for my solo, whenever you put your heart into a performance or impassioned speech with the intent to evoke a specific reaction in one or more people, roll plus savior. You cannot use this move again until a new scene starts. And on a 10+, plus, your audience is completely won over. Even enemies may feel their hearts stir with emotion, if only for a moment. Take plus one forward on your next move and choose an additional effect, which I'll go through if you get a 10+. Plus. Uh, on a 7 to 9, you get a decent reaction. Most of your audience reacts the way you want within reason, but some are still unmoved. If your audience is a single person, they acknowledge your talent but may point out some glaring flaws in your performance. Take plus one forward on your next move and mark a condition that reflects how you feel about your performance's shortcomings. And on a miss, oh, no. you bomb. Mark two conditions, and your audience may start spreading the word about your screw-up, which I don't oh, think they would in this case, but <laughs> you may also yeah. like, oh, no. just <laughs> damage your, minus uh, one and save you. the, the uh -huh. views of your abilities in the eyes of your clubmates. <laughs> yeah. um, and any enemies in your audience are unfazed and continue doing what they were doing before. Oh, boy. Okay. So, you get, yes, you get to roll. Uh, do you want to transform to do this, or do you want to just do this as Jaden? Um... Strategically, it'd be smart to transform, but I think it wouldn't really make sense. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense story wise to know. That's, yeah, Keep... that's what I would think. Yeah. I think I would ask you to justify it if you were going to transform. Yeah. Uh, okay, so savior, right? Yes. Oh boy, he's going to bomb. I got minus one. Okay. And you also have uh, some conditions as well. <laughs> oh, you still got oh, a. I mean, yeah, oh, wait, did you get... good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. No. Oh, you hey, got a two. Oh, dear. No. Oh, dear. I bombed. Um, oh, no. So you get to mark potential. Oh, boy. But you do oh, also get no. to mark two conditions. I'm going to give you the choice of what they are. You you could mark afraid, angry, or hopeless. Those are the conditions you don't have marked yet. Yeah. I, I think afraid and hopeless. Oh, no. Uh, anyone's agree. <laughs> Jim, you have four yeah. conditions oh. marked. You poor boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, um... Um, and I should point out... Um, since if you do want to transform later, um, you will not be able to until you clear at least one condition. Oh. Oh, no. So, yeah, I think he's really he's really excited and also very nervous as he's playing. Yeah. So he probably forgets some parts and just some keys. Yeah. yeah, you're unfortunately, like, so excited and, like, so, like, you've got, like, adrenaline running through your system. You're just, like, shaking, and it's just, like, every so now and again, it's, like, you're not quite hitting the right notes or, like, uh, going a little too fast, rushing through the song, and it's just not sounding the way it sounds in your head, and you're getting increasingly more, like, oh god, oh god, oh god, why, 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 why? Yeah, I think I end up just bailing halfway through, like, oh. Um, sorry, guys, I... I swear it does sound better than that. And how does everybody else feel about this? All right. Um, well, um, you know, maybe once we uh, have a, a demo and I look over at Karen, then we can get she a better idea of how it will sound. Jane just like, nods. Looks very Aww. dejected, but... Aww. Anne puts a hand on, like, Jane's shoulder and goes... Uh, sure, you're only human. We all make mistakes. Believe me, I know that much. Thanks. Um, and actually, as you're having this conversation, you hear the door open. And standing in the doorway is Diana and two girls you don't recognize. And that's where we're going to leave it. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, what? I knew it was going to be Diana. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> If there's gonna be a fight beans. I have four conditions <laughs> Oh no Oh no <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the plan. You call it to transform and you let me, the eight foot stone brick shit house, just beat the hell out of him. That's the plan. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, well, thank you all so much again for that session. It, it, again, it went a little short, but I think it was a really good place to end it, and I'm looking forward to seeing how y'all handle next time. I have plans oh, for next I can't time. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dana Alexa as Valerie Pierce, Tia Wind as Evangeline Blake, Maria Fanning as Anne DeVille, Draconix as Jaden Lott, Luca as Queen Bee, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Blake1995, Icicle Prism, Noreen, and Rain Crystal. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad and is under license from Storyblocks.com. Music for Jaden's song was composed and performed by Street Sorcery. You can find his music on Bandcamp at streetsorcery.bandcamp.com. Other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from storyblocks.com and freesound.org. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. Stick around for a teaser for Transplaner RPG, an all-trans, anti-colonialist homebrew campaign that streams live on Twitch. Thank you again for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Blessed be the dull, for they have no mind to doubt. Blessed be the cruel, for they have no heart to vow. Blessed be the weak, for they have no teeth to gouge. Blessed be the empty, for we have no soul to shroud. When a paroxysm of magical disasters disappears the stars and vanishes the gods, four strangers must overcome their differences and their traumas to save the world and themselves. Hi, my name is Connie, and I am the GM and executive producer behind Transplaner RPG, an all-trans, POC-led, 100% homebrew actual play campaign set in the non-colonial, anti-orientalist world of Endake. New episodes stream every other Saturday at 3pm Central on Twitch at Transplaner RPG. Past VODs are available on YouTube at Transplaner RPG, as is a written, succinct, yet detailed recap document. Follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at, you guessed it, Transplaner RPG. Thank you.